are you surprised by how uh, rigorously the Labour Party is now sticking to this sort of soundbite that they're not going to be a, a big spending, a deficit spending party anymore? Um, well, not that surprised. Um, remember, Labour has done this ever since 1997, when Tony Blair pledged to match uh, the Conservative spending plans. Um, that was also true um, in the 2015 election. Indeed, even Jeremy Corbyn um, claimed that uh, his party's policies were fully costed. That is to say that spending increases were matched by tax increases. Now, um, as with all manifestos, those numbers didn't really add up particularly well. Neither did, of course, the Conservatives. Um, but this sort of um, lip service to fiscal responsibility is something that all governments and oppositions do. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm not surprised that they're saying it. The question is, as you say, well, what does that really mean in practice? What are they going to do? Um, I think what would what I would be concerned about is that they repeat the mistake which Blair and Brown made, which was to promise to stick to not only promise to stick to the conservative spending plans, which Ken Clark, the then conservative chancellor, later admitted were completely unrealistic and crazy. But they did stick to it, um, which in the early years of the Labour government did quite a bit of damage to public services. And then they swung completely in the other direction realized that this was a mistake and just threw money at public services uh, with the result, of course, that a lot of it, you know, public services did then improve, but quite a bit of the money was frankly not spent that well. And that sort of boom and bust approach for spending on the public services, really, you know, whatever you think about what the right level of tax and spending is, is not a very good way to run a government. Uh, are we now in an era where that level of tax and spend really does have to match itself much more than previously thought? What has the Liz Truss experiment taught us about the uh, appetites in international markets uh, or, or the willingness to lend money to this country if, if, uh, if it looks like this country is going to be spending through deficit? Um, th that's right. I mean, things have changed. So in the early 2010s, I and I think a lot of sort of mainstream economists in a Keynesian tradition said that the government could and should um, borrow considerably more because um, interest rates were extremely low, both here and internationally. It was absolutely clear that the markets thought that more deficit spending was perfectly prudent and were prepared to finance it. Indeed, they wanted to finance it. Um, and hence, unfortunately, the government didn't listen then. We got austerity with the, and we're still seeing the damaging effects of that now. Um, unfortunately, of course, um, the, those circumstances have changed. The constraints on public spending and borrowing are much tighter in an era where inflation is high and where long-term interest rates are going up. Again, both here and internationally. So tax and spending will, you know, not on a year to year basis, but over the, the, the next decade at the moment, it looks like taxes and spending will have to match much more closely than they have in the past. So, uh, uh, um, you know, that, that environment has changed. And that means, I, you know, my view, as you know, is that given the quality of public services we have now, given what the British people actually want. That means that over the medium to long term, taxes are going to have to rise. This government has already set out some proposals for doing that, but I think more is likely to be required.